uh, trained us in Houston for a long time with uh, the great instruction teams back there and all the great training, all the engineering that's going into uh, this uh, multi-purpose logistics module, Leonardo. Uh, took it out of the payload bay with the, uh, the Canada Arm 2, the big robotic arm. Some views out uh, one of the small bottom windows as the uh, MPLM comes up uh, to docking. It's holding about 15,000 pounds of uh, goods uh, to, uh, in, uh, to stow away into the space station. Uh, later in the day when we got a chance to open up the station, the uh, crew was uh, just wondering where it's all going to go because there is just a, a great deal of uh, goods in there. There are racks in there, there's science in there, and there are um, just, just uh, a lot of things that we need to uh, sustain uh, science and uh, living on space station. It's a nice view. Uh, you see sunrise back there. Uh, just uh, in the nighttime, we use a lot of illuminators and everything to make the robotics work. Uh, you can see the grapple fixture of the space station arm with the MPLM just above the payload bay. Uh, in the meantime, a lot of work being done around uh, various places in the space shuttle and space station uh, simultaneously. Here's uh, CJ with a full uh, water container. We make water as a product of uh, generating electricity. Uh, as we combine our hydrogen and oxygen together, we get electrons and we get water. And the space station is more than happy to take our excess water, so we fill bags for them and transfer it over there. This is uh, after some um, maneuvering of this uh, Leonardo logistics module. We have it up now just below the Nader port on the space station and uh, just ready for the install. Christopher and Frank uh, were the ones uh, setting up the MPLM for ingress there, and they're getting ready to uh, do some work on the hatch. Tim Copra, who will be coming home with us on Discovery, uh, also uh, helping out. Just a little interior view of the space station there. we got two robotics workstations, uh, the one called the Cupola behind us there, and then the main lab uh, robotic workstation that Mike Barrett and I are working on uh, to get all the work done. Every uh, once in a while we go take a look out the windows to see what's really going on outside. Otherwise we use multiple camera views and uh, lots of other tools to help us see what's going on. The view right in front of me is a camera looking out the Nader port of uh, node 2 as the CBM comes right up to it. Or the MPLM comes right up to it, excuse me. to work with the uh, the real arm. It works uh, just like the simulations back at the Johnson Space Center and uh, everything the instructors taught us was uh, dead on. There's Nicole and myself working uh, to transfer an experiment. It's called MDS. It uh, came up on the shuttle and we're going to leave it on the space station uh, for just some long-term work. It's a powered payload, so uh, there were some things we had to do as far as taking power off. Once that was done, Nicole used a, a locker tool that we have to unbolt it from uh, its place there, and then we would uh, take it over to the station. So it's all unbolted, unpowered, and it takes two people to take something this size through the, uh, the different hatches that we have to get to the station. going up through the uh, airlock hatch where we're connected to the station and you'll see how things open up a little bit once we get onto ISS. It went into the uh, JPM, the Japanese module. We uh, installed it and bolted it back in, pretty much reversed the procedure, hooked the power back up, but this time it would be hooked up also with water. Uh, another thing that we do is uh, transfer oxygen from the shuttle to the station. And it's a procedure uh, that uh, you see uh, uh, CJ and Bob Thirsk working on. Uh, CJ's putting on his gloves. We never want to get uh, any of the oil from our skin onto the connections with oxygen. We try and keep those connectors as clean as possible, uh, free of debris, oils, anything that could cause a contaminant or uh, uh, actually could cause a fire. And the place where we took the MDS out of the uh, space shuttle, 
We're going to put two lockers that come off of the ISS. There's Danny uh, with one. Uh, they don't uh, fit exactly the way that our shuttle lockers do, so uh, previous to Danny bringing the locker in, I had installed two uh, adapter plates that go in the back there to allow the, the bolts on the lockers to line up. It's always fun up on the shuttle order station when you get a chance to work with tools. We get some great training uh, for in-flight maintenance down on the ground. Danny doing the uh, EMU uh, transfer, uh, and he's being guided from uh, behind from uh, with Tim Copra. So they're transferring the EMU suits to the uh, airlock on the International Space Station. Uh, we have a big day tomorrow, busy day, where uh, Danny and Nicole will do the uh, first uh, EVA. You can see me there trying to get out of the way because it's a big package that uh, Danny is transferring over and uh, it's a long translation path and then once he gets to the airlock, uh, he of course uh, has to uh, secure them and then uh, we spend a good part of the day uh, prepping them for tomorrow's activity. And, and uh, here we have uh, a Christer and uh, Frank DeWin uh, getting ready to, uh, to open the MPLM hatch. And uh, as you can see, uh, Christopher has been working all day in terms of uh, getting it ready, pressurizing it, and opening it, and was very uh, successful in doing so. Uh, over here, you, you can see uh, Danny and Nicole uh, prepping the, uh, the suits. As I mentioned earlier, we spent a uh, great deal today, uh, mostly them, uh, prepping the suits for tomorrow's uh, EVA. You can see Nicole uh, making sure she has all her EVA tools and, uh, and all her tethers and everything uh, that she needs for tomorrow's activity.